Hi everyone, this is Larry for BeckyHiggins.com. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the type tool to make multiple text boxes on your journaling cards. We are going to be mainly working with the horizontal type tool in this lesson. If you're unfamiliar with the type tool options, please refer to the type tool lesson named Record Your Story before you proceed with this lesson. And that will give you more of an overview of all of the different options that the type tool has. I have gone ahead and opened my Photoshop Elements Editor, and I'm in the expert mode. I have opened this journaling card from the Project 52 Fresh Edition. You will notice on this card that it has multiple places where we can input text. There's a place where we can add the month and the year at the top. There's these little boxes over here on the side where we can add the days. And then there's these little lines where we can add details. This is where the type tool in Photoshop comes really handy because we can make multiple lines of type and we can have them be different fonts, we can have them be different colors, and we can edit them individually. I'm going to start by adding the month and the year at the top of this card. I'm going to select the type tool over here on the left hand side. In my tool options, I'm going to select the horizontal type tool. In the font selector, I'm going to be using the Christina font. For my color, I'm going to click down on it. I'm going to click on this color wheel. And I'm going to make sure that I have black, which I do. Over here on the hex code, I have six number zeros. I can also use another color by sampling anywhere in here. Or I can use my eyedropper tool to sample colors out of the card if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my black color and click OK. I'm going to click down to create a cursor and I'm going to type January 2017. Now I'm going to click on the green checkmark box to commit. Whenever I click on that green checkmark box it automatically goes back to my move tool. With that move tool in place I can click and drag my type layer into place. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the number of the day to each of these boxes. To add my first one, I'm going to first select my type tool or type the letter T, which is the hotkey command for the type tool. I'm going to use the Christina font again. I'm going to use the black color. My size is at 22. I'm going to click down in this Monday box and type the number two. Click on the green check mark box to commit my change. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by using the command and plus key on a Mac or the control and plus key on a PC. And I'm going to move that into place. To add the date to my next box, I'm going to select my type tool again. I'm going to click down to create a cursor and type the number three. Click on the green check mark box to commit. And then with the move tool selected, move that in place. I'm going to repeat the process for the next day. Select my type tool, click down, type the number four, check the green check mark and move it into place. I'm just going to do the same thing with the last day. Select my type tool, click down to create a cursor, type the number five, click on the green check mark to commit, and move into place. Now we want to add some journaling in these different sections, but we want to make sure that we're not editing any of these previous layers that we've already used. So there's a little trick that we can do to create a new layer of type. With our type tool selected over here, we can hold our shift key and then click down. And you will notice over here in the layers palette that it's created this new layer of type. That way we won't change any of the settings of our previous layers. This works good for a single line of text, but if we wanna add a paragraph of text, we need to do something a little bit differently. We're gonna go up here to our layers palette and we're going to select this create a new layer icon and click on it. Now with our type tool selected, we can go ahead 
and click down and draw our text box. And once we let go, you'll notice over here in the layers palette that our new layer has now become our type layer. We want to make sure that we have our horizontal type tool selected. In the font selector, I'm going to be changing to Helvetica New Ultra Light. My color is going to stay black. My size, I'm going to dial it down. We'll try 16. I'm going to leave my letting how it is for right now and I'm going to do the left alignment. Now I can click down and start typing. You can click on the green check mark to commit. And now I'm going to add another section of journaling down here. So I'm going to click on my top layer in the layers palette. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Then I'm going to select my type tool. I'm going to keep it with this Helvetica new. And I'm going to click down and drag a text box. And click down on the green check mark box to commit. Now the beauty of having all of these different layers of text is that we can easily go in and edit anything. If we decide that we want to use a different font, we can just select the layer that we want to edit. We can double click on the thumbnail. It will select all of the text for us. It will bring up the type tool and then we can change it to whatever we want it to be. We can also change the color, the size, the alignment. It makes it really nice. It also makes it really easy for us to align things on the layers. If we want to move layers, we can easily move them without moving all of the text. I also want to show you a couple of tricks on a different card, so I'm going to switch to a different one. This is from the Adventure Awaits edition. This card is a four by six card that is a checklist of things to do. And you'll notice that there's lines where you can write things to do and there's also circles where you can check them off. There's a couple of ways that you can check things off and one of them is using your type tool. So I can go over here and select my type tool. I wanna make sure I have my horizontal type tool. I can use whatever font I want to use. I'm going to go for the Helvetica bold. I can set my color. I can set my size. Now I can click down to create a cursor and I can choose how I want to mark this off. So if I wanted to use a capital X to check it off, I could just type a letter X. Then I can click on my green check mark box to commit. It automatically moves me over to my move tool. I can zoom in by using the command and plus key on a Mac or control and plus key on a PC. And I can move this X into position. I can also enlarge it by clicking down on one of these corner transform handles and moving that out or moving it in and clicking on my green check mark box to commit. And I can use my arrow keys to nudge it into position. So that's one way that you can fill out those check mark boxes. Another thing we can do is we can use our custom shapes tool to draw a little shape for this circle. Mine is hidden underneath this rectangle tool. You can click on this rectangle or if you can't see yours, you can just type the letter U and that's the hotkey command. Down here in the tool options, you'll see that we have different shapes that we can draw. We're looking for this custom shape tool. So we wanna click on that one. We can click on this shape picker and it will bring up some different shapes that we can use. We can click down on this menu up here and we have different options for things we can draw. 
I'm going to leave mine on the default because I'm looking for this checkmark box right here. So I'm going to double click on that. I can set my color. So let's say I want to match my card a little bit more. I can click on this color picker wheel and it brings up this color dialog box. If I move my mouse over my card, my mouse becomes this eyedropper tool where I can sample colors. I'm going to sample this orange color right here and click OK. Over here we can select if we want our shape to be a fixed size or if we want it to be unconstrained. I'm going to leave mine at unconstrained. Now I can click down and start dragging and if I hold my shift key it will constrain the proportions and then let go. Now I can change to the move tool and I can move that into place. Now if you decide you don't like the size of that, you want it to be bigger or smaller, you can click down on one of the corner transform handles and drag it in or drag it out. And then click on the green arrow. You can use the move tool to move it into place. So drawing little custom shapes is just another way that you can add bits of design and personality to your cards. If you have any questions, you can email us at digital at beckyhiggins.com.